Well, 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 it's been a while since I've made a Unity tutorial video, but I'm back and today I'm going to show you guys how you can make a cutscene in your game or Unity project, whatever. And yeah, let's dive straight into this. So the first thing that we need is, I'm going to go over this really quickly. You need obviously a cutscene camera. So other than your first person controller, you need another camera. So the way that you create a camera is just right click and then create, uh, click on camera. And that's that. I already created one with an animation on it. But if you go to your animations tab, you should be able to see a button here that says create animation. And then you just create an animation. Going back into my first person controller, make sure that it is tagged as the player. Very, very important, guys. With my other videos i saw a lot of people struggling in the comment section saying oh my script isn't working it's not being triggered yada 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 like if you don't set it to player then it's not going to work now in it make sure it's set as player now i'm actually going to disable this and i'm going to show you guys my animation that i created i'm going to go over the tricks that i like to use or camera tricks that also that is also being used in like like 3d animations whatever in other game engines you name it so this is the animation that I want to trigger or my, you know, my cutscene. Look at that. The best animation that you're ever going to see in your life. I'm just kidding. Well, yeah, that's that. The cool thing here is that a lot of people think that, oh, when you go from like one position to another position, you need to make another camera. I mean, technically you can, but why the fuck would you do that? Because all you need to do is a little camera trick. So once you get to a certain position and you're like, okay, now I want to snap to like another place. All you need to do is I can see that I'm on frame 200. If I go to 201 now, you can see that it literally it snaps or you can place your camera somewhere else and give the illusion that you have multiple uh, cameras in your scene. But it's just a little camera trick. I'm not going to go over on how I created this animation. You guys, you guys can like figure this out on your own, how to make animations. I don't think that that is super hard. But yeah, that's that. The next thing that we need, I'm actually going to disable that. I'm going to turn on the first push controller. There we go. I downloaded this scene from the Unity Asset Store. The first thing that we need to do is create a 3D object, a cube. And we're going to call this Armory. Um, uh, cutscene Frigga. There we go. Remove the mesh filter and the uh, whatever. We only need the box collider and make sure that it is set to a trigger. Then we need to take the box collider and then wherever that you want your animation to start, you want to place that trigger. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, I don't want to place it here once the player enters this zone now make sure that they cannot like jump like avoid it in one way or another so make it like huge bigger than you want okay that's that as for the, the trigger then i'm gonna create a canvas so right click canvas leave it like that and inside of this canvas we're gonna create an image i'm just gonna call this fade image there we go now i'm gonna set the color to black and the opacity Oh wait, hold on. We also want to expand it to the full width of the canvas. So once you click on this little icon, you can hold down Alt. If you hold down Alt, you get like different, I don't know what the hell you call this, but different like icons. And then once you click on the bottom right corner, then it goes to full screen black. Then we need to go back to the color and set the opacity to zero. Okay, and that's all that we need for your scene. So your cutscene camera, your camera trigger, and your canvas. And that is it. The cool thing is, is that you like if you make another um, cutscene somewhere else, but you still have your canvas with this fade image, you can use this fade image again. And this method, you can call this method whenever or wherever that you like in other scripts or yada, yada, yada. Doesn't matter. So, so I'm going to make the script now. So we need a new folder called scripts. There we go. And then we're going to create a new C sharp script called armory cut. Uh, there we go. 
So the first thing we actually get rid of the update. We don't need that. We get rid of this common thing. The first thing that we need is the public game object, which is our player. Then we need a public um, camera, camera called uh, cut scene cam. Then we need the public image. So public image, and we're gonna use the Unity UI system here. So select that. And we can see that it added the Unity Engine UI. I'm just gonna call this a uh, fade image. There we go. Then we need a public float fade duration. Exactly. What? What the fuck? Okay. Good guess. Fade duration, indeed. And then we need a private bool called play cut scene once. And we're gonna set that to false. There we go. Show. In the beginning of our sheen, we need just in case. I'm gonna take the image and set the opacity to zero. So it's gonna create a new color. I'm gonna call this color. Color is fade image, fade image dot color. There we go. And then we can say color dot a, uh, a is zero. So the opacity to zero. And then assign that. So fade image the color is the color. There we go. Now what this does is it just gets the, the fade image, takes the color, sets the opacity to zero. And that's that. Okay, then we need our on trigger, our good friend, the on trigger enter. It's gonna say if other dot gameobjectcompare tag. But this is important why it's called or um, why you need to tag your player as player. Because otherwise anything with a rigid body and a box collider or a collider that enters this trigger, it will trigger this cutscene and you don't want that. That's why I set the player or the controller as the player. And we're actually not done because you also need to check that if the play cutscene is false, which it is, and only call that once, I'm going to say play cutscene is true. Just so, just so that it only calls this method once. We don't want the same like cutscene to be played every single time that we enter that trigger. All right. So now we're going to create a function, a enumerator. So an enumerator. And we're just going to call this fade in and out. Whatever. There we go. Then, and actually before we do that, I'm actually going to create another enumerator. And this is going to be fade image. I'm going to pass some parameters. So an image, image, and there's a the image, whatever, and then a flo float called start opacity and a float, float uh, target opacity and we need the float duration exactly like that then we say float or we'll carry a new float a lap set time is zero now we're going to create another color uh, color is equal to the fade image dot color Thank you very much. And then we're going to set the color opacity to the start opacity. So A is equal to the start opacity. That's that. And we'll now we create a while loop. I'm going to say exactly like, no, 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 hold on. It's not like that. Uh -huh. The fade. No, this is the duration. So as long as it's smaller than the duration itself. Then we're gonna say exactly that. Thank you very much. The cool thing is that uh, Visual Studio helps you out a lot. 
So that is handy. That, uh, dot blurb. I was going to say start opacity. Dot no, 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 no. And then the elapsed time divided by the duration. Thank you very much. Okay. And then all we need to do is set the image color. Dot color is color and then obviously return a null because that is what this method expects it expects the return type i'm just gonna set the uh, the color to the target opacity get opacity and we need to assign that color there we go okay that is whoo don't worry guys, I'm gonna put this script in the comment section below so you guys can just copy this. Don't worry about that. Okay, then back in our fade in and out, we need to call this function that we just created. So you'll return, and now we're gonna say start our coroutine. Fade in, or a uh, fade image. Obviously we need to pass some things so we're just gonna say okay our start opacity is zero because we're gonna start the fading out yeah we're gonna start fading out so we're gonna go to one and our duration is our fade duration which is this fun or oh, this um variable over here then once we are once the fade out has played so once we are in that like black screen, I need, I want to make it a little bit more smoother. So I'm just going to wait one more second to, you know, start the animation. So we're just going to say, uh, you know, new wait for, for seconds, uh, one second. And then we just need to say the player dot set active is false and we set our cutscene camera active so camera react dot set active is true okay and then we need to call this function again but we need to fade uh -huh. but now it's obviously this one this is zero like I, I get confused with this like fade in and out like the fade in is when we go from black Okay, yeah, when we go from black to zero, and when we fade out, we go from one to zero. <laughs> like, it just it just confused me so much. We need to call this function, so start coroutine, fade in and out. Oh, thank you very much. And that should be it. We should see that if I save this now and go to the scene, we put it on our armory cutscene trigger. So we're just gonna click and drag it in and it assigned the player to the well, player slot, then the camera to the camera slot. I'm actually gonna uh, turn it on. Uh, da -da 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 -da. And then the image, which is our fade in image and our duration is going to be one second. Uh, yeah. Okay, let me actually press on play. Let's see what we get. There are two audio play. Okay, hold on. And that is because our camera is, oh, our camera is set active. So we're just gonna say game of react dot set active is false. Just to set it false in the beginning of our scene. Okay, now we shouldn't get that warning. Okay, perfect, that is gone. We go into the trigger, we can see that it starts to fade out and we get our cutscene. Beautiful. And there we go. However, we can see that it's not stopping or we don't trigger or we're not saying like, okay, disable the cutscene cam and enable our player. So all we need to do is create another function called, I don't know, stop cutscene. I'm just gonna copy this 
We're going to paste it down here. I'm going to say stop cut scene. There we go. Now. Okay, so depending on how long your animation is. So my animation for my cutscene camera is 10 seconds long. So in this function, the, the stop the... Um, and uh, the uh, the cutscene, I need to make sure that after 10 seconds that we enable our player back. So depending on how long your animation is, this is going to be different than somebody else's or anybody that's watching right now. You want to put in your last frame. So if I go back, you can see that mine stops at 10, 10 seconds. I mean, yours might be 20, 15, even a minute. I don't care. You have 15 seconds put in 15 you have 20 seconds and put in 20 so i have 10 seconds so i'm just gonna say you return new wait for seconds wait for 10 seconds because then my animation is done and then all we need to do is obviously call back our fade in image and we're just gonna do the exact same thing i yeah that should be it that is all that we need. The only difference between this and this is that here we wait 10 more seconds or 10 seconds before we play this. Oh, and by the way, we set our player to true and we set our cutscene camera back to false. And that is it. Now we need to call this function, don't forget it. So we're gonna call this in the trigger itself. I'm just gonna say stop cutscene. And this, ladies and gentlemen, should be. It. let's see what we get if I press on play okay and I walk into the trigger we get our fate out in whatever oh there we go Boom. and then we can see that whoa there we go look at that that was awesome Okay guys, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Like what I would do is create like a voiceover narration. Like I would open up ChatGPT and and say something like, give me a voiceover of, of some type of like magic armory in the wasteland. And give me like a nice background story. Let ChatGPT write that for you. And then you make like a cool narration using Audacity or whatever. And you can play that audio when uh, you know that the, the cutscene is playing so that is something that I want you guys to figure out on your own so just make an audio source somewhere put in an audio and then once your cutscene starts to play play that audio source and give maybe like subtitles or something like that but anyways guys I hope you enjoyed the video hope this was helpful educational and I'll see you guys in the next video peace out guys